NBFC P2Ps have been observed to underplay the risks through various means, such as promising higher or assured returns, structuring the transactions, anytime, providing anytime fund recall facilities. Let me make it clear that any breach of the licensing condition and regulatory guidelines by these entities is not acceptable. Under the revised framework for microfinance loans, rule-based prescriptions on pricing of loans were replaced with a principle-based framework with enhanced disclosure and transparency requirements. It is observed that the, while the lenders have been quick to pass on the increased costs to the borrowers, they have been reluctant to pass on the benefits envisaged under the new framework to the borrowers. Some of the MFIs have increased their margins disproportionately under the new regime. We are not oblivious to the misuse of the freedom provided to the microfinance sector and some of the irresponsible practices some of these entities are uh, having and perhaps more such instances does put pressure to act on these entities. There has been a lot of uh, comments even from the legislation or the government officials about the high interest rates. I think all of you are aware of the issues around what happened in Assam. So I think there is a need for some introspection in the microfinance sector on this aspect. Post-March 2023, the banking sector turmoil in US and Europe, the business models of financial entities have come under enhanced scrutiny. We have also observed concentrated business models in some NBFCs. For example, some of them have concentrated exposure to segments such as consumer loans or vehicle loans. If any of these segments face economic stress, there can be a significant impact on the financials of these NBFCs and in turn on their lenders, including the banks. It is in their own self-interest that the entities should consider these risks and we expect the boards to have a pulse on such issues. Lastly, in view of the increasing reliance of NBFCs on delivering their services through the digital medium and their partnership with fintechs, the sector's exposure towards technology risks, including cybersecurity threats and operational disruptions, as well as their reliance on third-party partnerships, have increased significantly. Therefore, we expect the entities to put in place suitable risk mitigants commensurate with their business and risk profile, even if it means going beyond the minimum regulatory standards. We have recently come out with a draft omnibus framework on the SROs. The SRO is expected to play an important role in improving the compliance culture, as well as promoting ethical business practices, customer protection, better governance standards, sound risk management measures, and contribute positively to the orderly development of the NBFC sector.